Tonight, more support on its way for our local drought-affected farmers. And local GPs urged to consider newly legalised medical cannabis as a treatment option. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Drought-stricken farmers in South Australia have been thrown a lifeline with a government boost to mental health funding and pastoral rebates. The extended relief package aimed at those facing a third consecutive year of drought. Nathan Regter has more. It's much needed relief for hundreds of farmers doing it tough. The state government announcing it'll reallocate some of its $21 million drought relief package. The news comes off the back of the Premier's visit last month to some of the worst drought affected communities in South Australia. We're dealing with soil erosion. We've put money there uh, as an emergency action fund uh, to deal with soil drift. The regional health crisis dominated talks with the Premier last month. Minister Whetstone says it's being addressed with an extra $2 million injected into mental health support. To have people that understand what's happening, the difficulties that are faced by farmers currently, it's re that's super important. The funds will provide mental health outreach services the ability to go door to door and support farmers. To be able to provide some support at the farm gate to people that need it really does have a flow on effect to help people get through hard times. Hundreds of farmers have been crippled as they continue to struggle with low rainfall, many facing a third consecutive year of drought. Extra wild dog traps, council rates relief and a 50% rebate for pastoral leases also guaranteed for farmers. We're putting money back into, uh, into those uh, drought affected farmers pockets as well as making sure that we get to some of those community events out there. The government is urging drought affected farmers to make use of the support. A frustrated York Peninsula resident is calling for more GPs to prescribe medical cannabis. The state health minister also backing the move, urging doctors to consider the drug if it's a treatment option. Legalised since 2016, but locals are still unable to access this medicine. Fed up patients say stigma is to blame. They're going to their, their trusted GPs and their um, health professionals seeking out information about medicinal cannabis, um, but there is um, quite a gap. This advocate submitting her thoughts to a national inquiry, detailing the barriers South Australian patients face. What they were hoping to do is to better understand the issues around patient access to medicinal cannabis in Australia. Starting her quest for better treatment 13 years ago through a devastating loss of a loved one. I'll often say to people, we lost Dad well before he died because of um, the amount of, uh, uh, I guess, it's opiates in his system. In a statement, Health Minister Stephen Wade said he's asked SA Health to write a letter to doctors across the region, urging them to seek more information on patients eligible for a prescription. Advocates are also encouraging doctors to help break down the stigma and assist those who need it most. If anyone has a story to tell, we'd encourage them to, to be bold about it as well and share their personal experience. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. While the recent rains in the Broken Hill region have been welcomed, local police are warning drivers to be wary of the slippery roads. Officers urging motorists to be mindful of the increased stopping distance cars need when it's wet. They also say a number of highways and tracks can get flooded in the far west, with drivers urged to be aware of road closure reports. And if the rain gets too heavy, police say the best thing to do is pull over and wait it out. The Stirling North CFS station could soon be redeveloped, with the brigade looking to build new storage sheds. However, they need their lease extended first, with council putting it to community consultation. Laura Milovanovic has more. Changes are coming to the Stirling North CFS station, with the organisation planning better storage facilities if their lease is extended. They're calling on a 15-year extension, with the current one ending in June 2023. It, that would just basically give us um, the time frame that we need to know that the money we're going to put into this is going to be a, a good outcome for us for, the, for those 15 years. They're planning to knock down two existing sheds and replace them with a larger three-bay shed. Bigger and better facilities gives us you know, the room we need. Without the room, we can't have all this fancy equipment. Um, it's good to have you know, a $400,000 truck, but if we can't put it in a nice shaded shed, 
and we have to sit it outside in the sun. The CFS is funding the redevelopment, with the brigade successful in securing funding from the Project Renew program. And they granted us the application. We were lucky enough to um, go ahead with it and they've granted us $150,000 to develop a new, a new shed. There will now be a community consultation period, a requirement for council when approving a lease longer than five years. We are a community based organisation, it's always good to have the community's feedback. Um, you know, we don't plan on going anywhere, we want to maintain the highest response and, and protect the community to it the best we can. Um, and these sort of projects will allow us to keep doing that. If approved, these old sheds will come down by the end of the month, with the construction of the new one beginning soon after. Still to come tonight, On The Run officially opens its second Port Lincoln store and the secret behind the revitalisation of Bennett Oval's playing surface. Welcome back. On The Run has opened its second store in Port Lincoln today, housing the city's first Hungry Jacks and Krispy Kreme outlets. Food lovers pack the store to get their hands on the new treats, with staff preparing for a busy few days. A red carpet welcome for On The Run's latest development in Port Lincoln. Dozens of sweet tooths flooding the store. Oh mate, spot on. They're the best I reckon. The Hallett Place store is the second OTR in the town and houses the first Hungry Jacks and Krispy Kreme in the Lower Air Peninsula. Staff prepared to be run off their feet as burgers and donuts fly out the door. Uh, onion rings, we've tried the hot dogs and the fries, the chips. Yeah, and it's been really good, really fresh, really good. Hectic, we're prepared for a rush and everything. It was a food lover's delight last night with samples of burgers, donuts and hot dogs on offer. It'll definitely uh, make, uh, make it a lot easier when you're hungover, sure. So we're always looking to expand and grow our brands. This gives us opportunity to bring brands such as Sea Coffee, Hungry Jacks and Krispy Kreme to the town. The $4 million development has taken more than two years to get it up and running, creating 58 local jobs. It's actually been good to see the expansion of this type of retail store within Port Lincoln, so uh, another one here is a, is a great thing. For some die-hard burger fans, it's been a long wait. Some decided to camp out overnight to get their hands on the first one this morning. I've actually got a few friends that are doing it as well with their swags out in the car park. <laughs> Nathan Regter, Simon Spencer Golf News. Recycled water is being used to revitalise the playing surface of wireless Bennett Oval ahead of Saturday's AFL match. The water comes from the nearby wastewater treatment plant, which also irrigates several other ovals around town. It's green, luscious and soft to touch. The upgraded Bennett Oval looking like a pristine bowling green. The AFL's got a pretty high standard and uh, you know, Wilder Council is looking to continue that standard right throughout the year. Council enforcing a rigorous mowing, fertilising and watering program to meet these needs with a huge contribution from SA Water. 350 megalitres of water available to Council each year uh, and we use that across our medium strips, our open parks and gardens, school ovals, sporting ovals and we've also got the ability to use it here at Bennett Oval. In this instance we're able to provide this recycled water as a lower cost water option for the council which means that they're able to have a sustainable long-term water supply. The water is taken from the wastewater reclamation plant distributed to council's central pump and then used to irrigate the town, a necessary process to save our environment. While it's a pretty dry place uh, so having 350 meg of additional water that's not coming out of the Murray uh, is fantastic. More than 2,500 metres of PVC piping has been installed under the oval surface with 135 sprinklers creating an even water coverage. We recycle around 30% of our wastewater and that equates to around 30 billion litres of water that is recycled every year. Council inviting the public to see it for themselves. After the AFL game there's going to be a public kick and catch on the oval so uh, people will be able to come down and have a kick uh, straight after the game. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. After months of designing and fabrication, two new eye-catching sculptors have been installed at a Broken Hill landmark. The artist behind the installation says he's loved every minute of working in the Silver City.
Blending into the nature, the Riddiford Arboretum Sculpture Symposium has two new additions. I'm really happy that they, they suit the site. Melbourne-based sculptor Robbie Rowlands was given a challenging task late last year. Combine the region's nature with the city's mining heritage to interpret the significance of Australia's first green belt. The end result, after months of constructing, these two sculpture works in the heart of the Arboretum. They needed to be conducive to an environment that's dedicated to nat you know nature you know th I didn't want them to overpower the park. The first sculpture installed stands tall among the trees made up of recycled rock bolt splits from the local mines. The second takes the form of curled up bark that has fallen to the ground. Both sculptures will also be lit up at night time. I think this will fo focus people's attention on on our wonderful local flora, the flora um, of, of this region and when they come to see these sculptures. So I think it's an amazing achievement and a wonderful thing. Robbie says he's loved working in Broken Hill. I'm kind of actually really excited to come back and just, you know, experience the place without a list of things I need to do. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us. We take a look at Golden North's new product range and 500 miles of music set to return to the region. Golden North's award-winning giant twins have been rebranded, with a focus on returning to the company's 1950 roots. Mid-North staff say the new eye-catching packaging will be a treat for new and returning customers. Fresh off the press here at Golden North's iconic Laura factory, these workers and machines pump out 4,000 giant twins every hour. And now there's some exciting new additions to the family, with the company unveiling a revamp to its offerings. That relaunch is a whole new packaging for the product, uh, with three new products being banana, strawberry and spearmint. It's not the only changes implemented, with an easy to snap option now available for those willing to share. Our Giant Twin was, has always only been one bar of ice cream, so part of the rebrand is to add an indent into the top of the bar so that you can snap it and share it and, and give it that twin name that it's, it's known for. Staff members, some who've worked at the facility for over 40 years, say the new flavours are a welcomed addition to their historic product line. Operate the machine that wraps Giant Twins. I love two, unfortunately, because I eat them all the time. <laughs> and the other one's growing on me. The factory is in full steam ahead, stocking shops and servos around South Australia. They say the facility remains critical for the Mid-North's continued economic growth. The importance of Golden North, um, not just on Laura, but uh, the region is massive. With the 65 jobs, um, it's, it's a huge option opportunity for people to gain employment. Ice cream lovers across the region are encouraged to give the new flavours a try. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Organisers were working around the clock today, preparing for one of the biggest racing events on the Air Peninsula's calendar. Thousands are expected to hit the track tomorrow for the annual Port Lincoln Cup. All eyes will be on race number seven, and last year's winner Lady Conquistador. Tony McAvoy has sent a horse over, classic Weiwei, which will obviously be well fancied as well I would think. The fashion at the races event will also be making a return, with entrants encouraged to sign up. Gates open tomorrow at 11am. Wireless Leisure Centre has been nominated for a 2020 Australian Fitness National Award. The centre a finalist in the Quality Accredited Fitness Business of the Year category, acknowledging its importance to the community. It's a popular hub, whether you're learning to swim, play basketball or even join the gym. The Wyala Rec Centre is used by many throughout the year. It's proven that uh, fitness and all of those sorts of things, being active, you know, releases endorphins and, and makes you happy. Now the centre is a finalist in a national competition, up against gym businesses across all of Australia. Initiative of the YMCA across South Australia over the last few months has to achieve quality accreditation for all of its sites across the state and we were lucky enough to be part of that initiative and we were successful in that accreditation. It's exciting for all our finalists, uh, but particularly for Ella. Um, it's indicative, I guess, of the particular gym that we 
have uh, recognised up there. It's one of 80 gym businesses that have gone through the competition. The award a lengthy process focusing on more than just having flashy gym equipment. There's a lot more behind the scenes in regards to community engagement, what programs and services we offer. All the winners will be announced at a gala celebration dinner in Sydney on Friday the 1st of May. The centre encourages locals to come down to this fitness hub and get involved, offering a gym with 40 classes available, a laned swimming pool, play cafe, along with netball and basketball courts. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. The 500 Miles of Country Music Festival is returning to our region for another year. The cream of Australian country music will perform over five days, travelling as far north as William Creek. Returning this year with a jam-packed lineup and itinerary, 500 Miles of Music will journey to some of remote and rural areas of South Australia. The whole point is to, is to bring a, a decent show to, to smaller communities that wouldn't normally get to see the bigger name acts come through. Government figures show last year's performance boosted the tourism sector. Statistics through SATC's modelling, in our first event we generated over a quarter of a million dollars just for all the little remote and regional towns that we went to. The Wilmington Rodeo Club president says their venue is a perfect place for the show. We've got the facilities here, we've got the people that love the music, the outside atmosphere, we've got great volunteers that will get behind us, um, so we thought it was a great great thing to support the community again. Other towns waiting in anticipation. Really excited, yeah, yeah, because since mine closed in Lee Creek, well, we haven't had anything in the last four or five years, so this, is, this will be a great. The headliners eager to see parts of South Australia. We hardly ever get to go across to South Australia and um, we just love it there and it's, yeah, it's awesome for us to have the opportunity to come over and very, very excited. Heard lots about it and can't wait. Really excited to see, you know, uh, you know, out around the Flinders Ranges and, and have a look around and um, play to those people that are really passionate about our country. And the crowds are being urged to start getting excited. Expect loads of great music, and I know with this lineup of artists that, that when they come out to put on a show, they're, they're all about putting on the best show they can and uh, with great musicians. Laura Milovanovic, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We check in with what's biting in the golf this weekend. And Brit has a long weekend weather forecast. Hello again. Time now to check on what fish are biting in the Gulf this upcoming long weekend. Here's fishing tips. Welcome another week around the Gulf fishing tips. I tell you what, last week I promised you there was blue swimmer crabs. I myself went out on Sunday and uh, we pulled 40 crabs in 40 minutes. It's absolutely perfect. One of the best days crabbing ever. But let me advise the anglers around Port Pirie, you do have to travel a little bit to get hold of those. Yellowfin whiting is starting to pop their head up at the moment as well, so I think while you're there, actually after you've got your feet of crabs, make sure, because the yellowfin are always the last ones to leave, so stay around a little while, I'm sure you'll be able to get yourself a catch with that. I haven't heard too much of the squid, but I mean, April is our usual time, so we may well the season's out a little bit, just have an opportunity to put a, a, a rod over for squid. But, um, Weather coming up over the weekend, quite nice. Have another crack and see what you can get. That's all we have this week. We'll see you next week. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel the North. Well, the season's definitely on the change at the moment. Cool mornings and uh, warm days. Something out of the unusual, there's lots and lots of little blue crabs around at the moment. Uh, down on the shacks, uh, on the incoming tide in the afternoons. Lots of silver whiting around uh, out in the middle banks. Uh, some garfish, if you do get a nice uh, calm night, try out dabbing for garfish. Some tommy ruffs around off the jetties down along the shacks. Salmon up in Port Patterson. And you still can get crabs as well, but they're taking a little bit longer to get in the net. So as my tip is always, leave those nets in for the first pull for about 10 minutes and then you'll start getting them. There are some snook around the middle banks and you wouldn't be surprised if the odd squid turned up. That's all we have from the Jewel of the North. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Squid seem to be on the improve, which is good news. There have been some reasonable numbers of squid caught in the proper and up along the North Shore, um, and the size hasn't been too bad. There's been some garfish and small tommies caught around Boston Island, and there have been some brim caught in the local marina. Whiting have been a little bit patchy in local bays. Um, they've been a little bit quiet down the passage as well, but thistle is still fishing well. Over at Coffin Bay, there's been quite a few salmon trout in the local bays. 
um, and there are some nice gummies in the channel if you're willing to sit it out um, and wean through the uh, stingrays. That's all for this week. We'll see you again with more tips next week. And time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Britt. Good evening. It's been a mild but mostly fine day about the region. Port Augusta, Broken Hill and Port Perry all recording 26 degrees. Wyala 24, Port Lincoln 22. A band of cloud crossed the Gulf today as we can see in these satellite images. A high pressure ridge sat to our west with a trough about the northeast of South Australia. To tomorrow and we'll start with the waters. Winds southerly at 10 to 15 knots with seas at 1 metre. Sunrise at 7 minutes past 7. Partly cloudy conditions expected about most parts with a little more cloud over the lower air peninsula. Broken Hill sunny and 27 tomorrow, Woodna also 27, Port Augusta, Corn, Port Pirie and Kadena 25, Wyala, Coffin Bay and Clare 23, Port Lincoln 22. Looking ahead briefly now, a partly cloudy weekend expected at both Port Lincoln and Cleve, highs in the early to mid 20s. Woodna sunny on Saturday, fine Sunday Monday. Wyala and Kadena with maximums in the mid-20s at the weekend, both looking partly cloudy on Saturday and sunny on Sunday. Port Augusta bright and sunny across the weekend. We've also got a sunny weekend ahead at Port Pirie, Clare and Broken Hill. And John, I'll have more on the weekend's weather tomorrow. Thanks for that, Brett. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have some updates later, but until then, enjoy your evening. On behalf of the team, it's good night.